Welcome mm-hmm. back, everybody. You got Will and I Man here from the Block Runner Metazone, Rovi and M Scribe, and we're back, I Man. Back, dude. The metaverse is back. Oh yeah, we're all the way back now, dude. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, it's a big deal, right? Because we're talking Animoca brands. I don't know. A lot of people probably don't even know who they are. Maybe a lot do, but we certainly do. Yeah, we do. We have kind of like a history. Yeah, I think if you're in the crypto space, in the metaverse, virtual land space, you know who Animoca is. Or like is. just general, if you witness kind of like the NFT. But you know what? People who are uh, collecting bitmaps, they probably, this is the first time they're exposed to like the whole metaverse Web3 concept. Agreed. Yeah, so I don't think people are aware of how much uh, influence Animoca had over, you know, NFT uprising. Yeah. For sure, Web3 gaming. That's right. Without a doubt. And then even more so, the metaverse concept as like Web3. Yeah. What are the definitions of that? What should we expect? They were major players and investors in the sandbox. Uh, were they in Decentraland? I don't think so. I don't think so either. Yeah. But nonetheless, the sandbox was a big deal. It's probably like one of the biggest. Well, it is the biggest, is the biggest Web3 biggest. metaverse. Yeah. By, by like holder count. A thousand holders. Yeah. Market and, cap. And by market cap. So, <laughs> I mean, it's a big deal, right? And now... There's a headline circulating around that they're exploring yeah. what it is we know and, and adore so much about, you know, the bitmap, potentially the bitmap ecosystem. Yeah. So anytime anybody talks about the metaverse, that's our that's our home. <laughs> that's our space. That's our that's gonna grab our attention for that's, sure. Yeah, that's our wheelhouse, right? And so yeah. when we see something like this, Horizon Labs, Anna Mocha, Life Beyond, and then they says panel discussion exploring the Bitcoin metaverse. Yeah. Ecosystem. Yeah, we saw that. I was like, oh, what could that possibly like, be? Or what mean? what Bitcoin metaverse exists other than bitmap? Yeah, we couldn't really. And then we also got to contextualize this too. The word metaverse is definitely like very broadly defined. Especially with something like Animoca and Just, yeah, especially, yeah, with them, but in general too. And like, yeah. It encompasses actually more than just, you know, what bitmap represents or like, you know, these virtual environment that you know these ready player one esque attempts at creating some sort of virtual existence or whatever Mm -hmm. with their own native digital economies i think people have kind of like used metaverse as an umbrella term for just gaming yeah but but still even if it's gaming what what games are on bitcoin same, (laughs) same thing you're right right what has happened in recent times that has enabled even like the ideation of like some kind of like you know game gaming ecosystem to emerge from Bitcoin, anything really, it could be exploring. Like the headline could be exploring the Bitcoin developer ecosystem or something like that. Yeah, it would be equally as interesting, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. So this is this is definitely just a weird collection of words. Yeah. For for this panel discussion. <laughs> Correct. And so anyway, we're alluding to that this must be a discussion on Bitmap. It has to be because. Up until Bitmap, there was no metaverse ecosystem really for Bitcoin. No, right? there wasn't. So this is very interesting for a lot of reasons, right? It's bullish because um, now and we have a big player kind of like peering into it. It's kind of like uh, Yuga Labs looking into ordinals, right? That's right. It was kind of like a validation confirmation that, you know, yeah. th- that this uh, this innovation has some legs, right? Some yeah. value here. Same thing happened with Xverse Wallet with the investment that they received, $5 million. Correct. That's just proof that there's there's value here Mm -hmm. and they're investing in the value and they're investigating in value. Yeah. So this is a panel on September 14th. Hasn't happened yet, but nonetheless, Yatsu, he's a, he's a big player and Animoca is involved in basically everything, Mm -hmm. even Yuga labs. Right. Yeah. So it makes sense that they're, you know, they have their, um, scouts on everything. I'm sure that's in related to ordinals because they've already done one successful drop. Mm Mm-hmm. They're on their way to doing a second one, you know, more Skittles and such. Mm -hmm. So this is a big deal, dude. Like, um, (laughs) it's not readily obvious because right now all they're doing is kind of like discussing these things on the panel Mm -hmm. at some kind of like convention and conference that you got to pay like 10 grand a ticket to go to. (laughs) Yeah. Token 2049 (laughs) is happening in Singapore. Correct. Yeah. So it's a big one. Yeah. I mean, Singapore is a huge hotbed for Web3. So yeah. Yeah. So this is going to be an interesting discussion. I wonder if it's going to be live. I doubt it nah i I don't even know i don't even know if this is going to be recorded well yeah it depends on how well organized token 2049 is if anybody's there you know yeah let us know in the comments if you're if you if you uh got tickets you're already there in singapore you're waiting to like you know hit up these events let us know for sure and uh if you can't be our conduit yeah (laughs) give us some insight some insider knowledge 
what it is they could be possibly be talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious. So what do you, what's your over under that bitmap gets dropped? Over well, give me a number. Oh, I guess one. <laughs> I guess zero, zero or more than one. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. How many bitmaps get dropped? Yeah. At least one. once. At least one? Yeah. Wow. If yeah, at least once. If not, then like what the hell else? For real. So um yeah, so let's let's continue on here. So like you were saying, at the metaverse in the context of like, you know, the adults talking about the metaverse is not it's not only just like our virtual existence in the virtual space, it's gaming. And yeah. so we have a game that says Bitcoin startup BTC Ordinal is building a full scale Ordinals MMORPG. Mm. So you have a little ex experience uh, with yeah, it looks MMORPGs. Like, it looks like Maple Story, dude. Almost, I mean, like it's like a mixture of Maple Story and Minecraft. I mean, it's a game, right? It, these things can be developed in any kind of flavor, mm -hmm. but. I'm not exactly sure what it means by this is being done on ordinals, like because typically the ethos of ordinals is like this very heavily heavy like on chain mm -hmm. presence to everything. Well, right? definitely all these transactions are not happening on chain. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so who knows? Maybe just like the um, the game character themselves, the the assets of the game. The assets, yeah. Yeah, typically like well, that's what you see in a Web three ecosystem. Maybe like a a Web three or a BRC twenty token launch. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Right. So. Did you know that we're more than just a YouTube channel? We also built Mscribe, the first inscription platform built from the ground up for the metaverse on Bitcoin. Connect your bitmap ordinals and use our tools to bring your community into the virtual realm. Support us by joining the movement at mscribe.io. Like, comment, and subscribe for the latest alpha. Back to the video. It's interesting. So these are the things that Animoca has to explore. Correct. Right. So BTC Machine, I think we've talked about them before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're developing that game. And, um, and it's going to be interesting because if they can do this on Bitcoin or wh whatever elements exist on Bitcoin, uh, we're going to see a ton more of this. So why do you think, dude? If it's, you, if it's you available were, on Steam, too. Very nice. Good, that's good traction, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're Animoca, like, what is it you're looking for? You know, like, because uh, hmm. they've made statements before about how important, you know, the open metaverse concept is. Yeah. And how... Um, you know, decentralization plays a critical role in what they what they interpret as like the actual next internet, right? Which is what the agreed upon definition of the metaverse is. Like it's it's the evolution of the internet into a 3D spatial experience, right? Yeah. But there's equally as utility providing, you know, like the metaverse should be exactly as equal or if more like um yeah, valuable. Yeah, it, it to should be it should be like the internet except multiplayer. So, yeah. so all the functionality that we experience on the internet, we should be able to do it, um, you know, collectively together mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah. And, um, and so uh, that's what we think the internet is, but, or the internet, the metaverse is, but, uh, but like we were saying earlier, the metaverse encompasses so many things, experiences within the metaverse, like a game. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what, what their takeaway is when talking about this functionality on top of Bitcoin, because historically, up until ordinals, Bitcoin has been largely just narrow with uh, money 100%. transfers. Yeah, there was nothing of interest. There's no presence for like an Animoca or right. some of these other big like ecosystem uh, infrastructure investor types to kind of like dabble into, right? Yeah. So I have another article here. It says the psychology of failure and its meaning for Web3 games. Mm. So this is, has a lot of implications kind of embedded into it that uh, Web3 games have failed. To a certain extent but it well, really yeah. it really talks about like the potential size of the web3 gaming <clears throat> ecosystem and it says here projected to grow to over 65 billion by 2027 up for up from 4.6 billion right so that that's uh i think a lot of these projections are probably like excluding what the value of the bitcoin ecosystem can bring you know because yeah. again like I think only just now it's starting to be realized that, you know, things can be built on top of Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. It's an early stage and early period to all of that. Yeah. A lot of infrastructure still remaining, but nonetheless. Like, yeah. We were also talking about Roblox. They have 65 million daily active users. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about how, um, you know, if you compare that to countries, that's, that's more than a lot of countries as yeah. it is yep. users. Yeah. And we were talking about how the metaverse in the context of like human beings and interactions 
has the potential to have, you know, hundreds of millions of people. Correct. Just because they're not limited to the geographic limitations that, that exist, right, physically. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, gaming, the metaverse, like anytime anything goes from analog, which is like our physical space, to virtual, which is the metaverse, yeah, it always does like 100x. Correct. Like gold to Bitcoin. Yeah. The value should eventually be 100x. Just mm. because it's so accessible. Yep. You only need an app to move Bitcoin. Yeah. You don't need a Brinks truck to move gold. Yeah, I definitely think most people uh, that I know in my, you know, life yeah. don't own any gold. <laughs> Correct. Right? That feels like a very exclusive uh, ownership experience. Just because you know? it's cumbersome and very... It's institutionalized, I guess. Yeah. Right? It's not like something traditionally that was... Uh, you're almost... Um, you're you're almost like if you collect gold, you're, you're kind of like a, a you're uh, one of those people that prepare for like a, yeah. an apocalypse. Correct. A prepper. Yeah. And so, I mean, even though gold has like it's an extremely valuable asset, mm -hmm. you're kind of crazy for collecting it, right? I don't know about all that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I would say you're crazy for collecting gold. Yeah. But you're right. It's way more accessible these digital assets, right? Yeah. So, and that is kind of like the superpower that they. Mm. They have, you know, in comparison to these analog comparisons that you're bringing up, you know? Yeah. And, and this, you know, $65 billion uh, uh, gaming prediction, we were talking about just a few years ago, it was multi-trillion dollars for the metaverse, mm -hmm. right? And so the way to access a trillion dollar industry is to onboard hundreds of millions of people into this virtual space. Correct. And so we just talked about how the virtual adds like a hundred X potential. So yeah. it's possible. It's just... Um, you know, having an open ecosystem like Bitmap, I think that's how we get there, right? Because yeah. we, were, we were talking about this, right? Yeah, I think that that I think once if if they do name drop Bitmap and actually do like a real due diligence yeah. breakdown of what Bitmap is and the standards that it's introducing, and yeah. now like the huge mega developer ecosystem that's emerging. Yeah, you know, this should check all the boxes like what it is Animoca has been hoping for, right? Yeah. So. So hopefully we get some access to this this video, potential video, because, dude, what if they fade bitmap? They could. What if they say, oh, you know, I, we heard about this bitmap thing, but, you know, it's not a big deal. Oh, my God. That would be hilarious. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> that would be the biggest, like. They don't understand. The biggest fumble of all time, in my opinion. Yeah. But I don't I don't think they could possibly come to that conclusion. I, I, I don't know. What else could possibly fit within that? the the thesis of like seeking like the you know the most optimal open metaverse environment exactly. right exactly that's what bitmap is yeah and it, and it's working is and it's so early still it's only been a few months yeah maybe not even that like two yeah and um so much is already being proven to work like you know the the e community is aligned the developers are showing up people mm -hmm. are building they're trying to add new value mm -hmm. uh, layers on top of the base the base understanding layer of what the bitmap theory represents, right? Yeah, because if you're going to build a multi-trillion dollar metaverse, it's not going to be on sandbox. Unlikely. Yeah, it's going to be on an open ecosystem where anybody can build. Yeah, like you could build a, just like sandbox can be like one of the like stacks yeah. of the bitmap ecosystem, right? Bitmap right. can be host to hundreds, if not thousands of different sandboxes. <laughs> sandbox renditions right whether right. it's like a voxel engine or like some right. kind of higher fidelity thing they could all be you know linked as like a cohesive metaverse open metaverse ecosystem and that's kind of the point right and that's why it's so mm. interesting about bitmap and why like this this feels like uh, we're kind of like speaking on their behalf because because we've been deeply involved in this metaverse space and we we see the value right yeah. it's why we're contributing and we're participating so heavily and we're supporting this movement because this is what we've been hoping for for a while, right? And I, we know Animoca has similar experience, deeper experience than us, so they're probably thinking the same thing. It's like, and once they come to understand the way we have, it's like, wow, we can't not contribute to this either. Yeah. <laughs> right? We have to support this, just like we supported NFTs. Yeah. Just like we supported, you know, the metaverse on Ethereum side and Web3 Gaming. Like, this is something that needs support. Yeah. Right? So the people building right now, like, this is like a kind of like a, Another beacon, dude. Beacon of hope. Like, yeah, you know, it, it, this is huge because... Rohan is coming. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. Coming to save Gondor, dude. I don't know. I got these Lord of the Rings references in my head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is a big deal because this is the first time that something's built on on a system of non-arbitrary attributes. 
See, that's I don't know if they're gonna pick up on that yet. <laughs> like, yeah, maybe talking about digital matter theory. Yeah, that's a little too deep, too soon, too deep in the cut. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that would be a fucking mind blower. Like they're it's on like, stage, it's like this digital matter theory thing, though. Yeah, you yeah. <laughs> like, no, that's interesting. Right. You know. But yeah, but nonetheless, if if they see value in bitmap, they see value because of this digital matter theory. Yeah, I think like, so. It's, it's the whole point of it is that it's a metaverse that is built on the data on blocks. Mm. That's cool. That's a cool narrative. Yeah. It, it exists whether you recognize it or not. Mm. And uh, and lo and behold, yeah. people recognize it. Yeah, I think so too. Like, and they've seen everything. Like, as far as like, yeah. um, ar- uh, from an arbitrary perspective, arbitrary virtual world, Genesis point yeah. of view. Yeah. You know, other side. Yeah. Everything is arbitrary. Just spun out of nothing. Yeah. Right. And then here's something that's spun from something. Right. So like, yeah, you're right. It, instinctually, that should be like, like some kind of gravitational pull because that's what pulled us in. Yeah. We didn't really have a clear definition of what it is. Yeah. We didn't like, oh, oh, we, we didn't see bitmap and we we're like, oh, digital matter theory. No. Yeah. yeah. We didn't know what it was that was like so intriguing. I was like, dude, this, this, but we just knew like, this is, this is something new. Yeah. This is something interesting. This is something that's never been done and it's unexplored territory. Right. So right. it's like naturally. That's our jam. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, um, any, anytime something new happens in crypto, it's a big deal. It is. Cause you never know what's going to, you know, results from it. Right. It's, it, it yeah. is that blank canvas theory, right? Just throw out a blank canvas. Yeah. See who comes to, you know, express yeah. on top of, and then sh- and in comes value as a result. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So some of the other canvases that have been introduced in the web three space, overly saturated, uh, polluted with like <laughs> dookie or whatever. I don't know, dude. Some of them get like really shitty over time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this one has a clean slate. That's why it's so like, you know, interesting. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like how many more times do we get uh, more like pictures? Like, Cr- Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, it's just because you put pictures on Bitcoin. I mean, I think it does add value, but uh, because it's on, on chain, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, just more pictures. Is, I don't know. It might, it might not be good enough to like create something new. Yeah, like the ordinal JPEG space for sure. It's, it is another blank canvas, but at the same time, it it, it comes like a little bit pre-soiled just because of what, <laughs> just because of what's happened in the past. You know, yeah. it, it has been even though it started out like purely organic and like you know real artists yeah. finding real value in like the digital space, but then eventually like the exploiters came and just tarnished it mm-hmm. at least for the time being. Yeah, right. But doesn't like detract at all from like, its value and, and you know, its contributions or anything. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay, so we've talked about, um, I, I guess, this, this announcement. It's going to happen in Token 2049, a couple of days, a few days from now, three days. Yeah, so main takeaway, uh, the future looks bright, in my opinion. Like, when I saw this, it's like, mm-hmm. I, I got the same feeling whenever I saw, you know, bigger players starting to come in and, like, say interesting things about NFTs back in, like, 2019 mm-hmm. days and stuff. and. And the metaverse space too is like you know what maybe there maybe there's hope like because back in those days you know it, f- it felt equally as like we're alone yeah in that, in that mission so yeah this is a big deal so everybody who's building you know you guys are on the right track for sure and clearly i mean the bitmap ecosystem although it's big is still small and so if you're making yeah. noise in the bitmap ecosystem and all of a sudden animoca is talking about the bitcoin metaverse mm. they're paying attention definitely right so yeah, they might not want to come out and outright say it like, you know, they're not going to make that. That's probably they wouldn't name drop bitmap, but they might say a lot of things that make it obvious that they're talking yeah. about it. It's kind of like how big, big, yeah, big wigs do it. You yeah. Know, like Apple, it's like, yeah, we're building this whole all this metaverse stack, but we're not going to ever say metaverse type thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of S- how they do it. Spatial computing, they say. Right. They won't say things until they know it's like publicly well received like yeah. it's a pr thing you know it's like yeah. we don't want to claim bitmap until we know for sh- certainty like this is what the people want you know? yeah that's true that's true they, they have their whole fucking well since they're watching yatsu you're welcome to come <laughs> on the podcast and yeah dude we'll break it, it we'll break it down we'll we'll um yeah if explore you need explore all this stuff if you need an explanation of what bitmap is yet we got you yeah we were there day not day one but we were the ones um like interfacing days. I'd say first with Vitoshi and kind of like unlocking the potential to all this and yeah, yeah. Ever since then, it's uh, it's flourished. That's right. right. So we're we're all in and we're happy to see Animoca and uh, friends yeah. exploring with us. That's right. Know? 
All right, guys, that's it for us. Make sure you like and subscribe. Follow all our Twitter channels, and uh, we'll catch you in the next video. Peace.